Peace, 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 peace. Oh, yeah. Life's shaking. But, yeah. Peace, greetings. I know I'm not on the camera right now. It's my first time doing it this way. Greetings to all. As you can see, this is another masterpiece that I have created. Greetings to all. Let's first give honor to the Most High, the Creator, the Source for what we all are in our life presently. These transformative moments, these ever-changing moments, economically, personally, globally. <laughs> Nothing really makes sense, it seems. But, um, let me, I gotta bear with me. I got my phone on the charger Why I'm trying to do this. So, I'm gonna try to give y'all a little quick close-up. Because when I sit down, I'm, I'm gonna believe I'm gonna move. As you can see, this is a phoenix. I'm gonna give y'all, like, literally, like, the backstory of a lot of this still in the process but you know yes let me sit this down carefully what did I have this at where the chair was okay there we go <sighs> greetings to all man y'all alright out there <laughs> How you doing? How you feeling? Right, let me plug the phone back up because again, I do not want it to. I don't know the duration of this video. Okay, so we good. That's plugged up. Get the camera position. Yes. Let me jump on in now. Just had me. Oh, I don't even know how I'm gonna look in the camera because I don't even. The way I got it angled, I just know it's looking straight here. So yeah, man, uh, as you can see, the motherfucking Phoenix, ah, I feel so great about this, bro. I'm not even gonna hold you like this. Matter of fact, let me turn this way. <laughs> man, the motherfucking Phoenix, man, like, ah, uh, if y'all only knew, only freaking new. I just looked at something. I got an idea to add to this, but yes. Man. Just take a moment to take this in. This is my first time being on the video with this one. Um, yeah. Late nights. Um, a lot of tears. A lot of letting go right now because we're in Scorpio season and I'm a few days from my uh, you know, some may say birthday, solar return, Earth Day. I don't know. Listen, I'm a few days. What is this? The seven? Actually, a whole cycle out, like seven days. So, man, this right here um, is is something that I can't even put into words because of the magnitude of just the the whole. Uh, Again, just the energy that I put into this, and so that's what this this um this this masterpiece or just what I'm gonna talk about is the reshaping or the 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 redefining my whole life right now. Like, and I mean not just internally, but this Scorpio season has been really inwardly like. I've been transforming and one thing if you don't know about me, it's like I've had to recreate, revamp, um, reintroduce myself to myself. That's the most beautiful thing about redefining yourself is like you have to reintroduce yourself to you because the you that you thought you knew or the you that other people thought they knew, they knew nothing. You, they don't even know you. And it's wild because you get to this place and you're like, yo, they don't even know me. My own family, my own friends, sometimes your own partner, your own spouse. And it's not necessarily like the anger or uh, any ill intent towards them. It's more so the awareness around who you become and through these versions of yourself, you know, myself personally, I've had to redefine myself through my, um, my own childhood traumas, my own shortcomings, my own becoming more aware of taking my the accountability into who I am and even how I got here. 
you know, with everything that has transpired and those major self-realizations of like, yo, what the fuck have I been doing? At the same time, tears of pain, but also tears of joy. So this masterpiece is a reflection of what's inwardly going. And as you can see, like this masterpiece is um, the process of creating this. I have to, I've had to um, shed layers literally like shed layers of certain relationships um that no longer serve me because of my mindset has changed and and it's not always something like what the other person did it's so much of the self-realization or the self-awareness around like i'm evolving to this place where i no longer feel it's not so much just feel but see this connection flourishing beyond this point or see longevity in it. And a lot of that is very like in the grieving process, which you have to become, when you become so aware that you're like, you know what, this doesn't serve my highest good to what it is I'm doing and what it is I'm progressing to. Um, it's just like someone has a mindset on a poverty mindset or a lack mentality and your mindset could be, you know, you, you renewed your mind and you, you want to talk about how, you know, even though this is happening to me, you want to be, your focus now is like, you know what, you know, money loves me or money flows to me or I am the asset, I am the currency rather than someone that you talk to that's like, you know, and it's no, it's no jab at people who have a nine to five or whatever, but it's more so like, that's just their all be all. That's just what their mindset is stuck on. And there's no difference in even how you see relationships, partnerships, business, and so forth. And it's a constant evolution where, you know, I don't have all the answers, but it's the lessons that I had to go through to get through here. So a lot of you that have been following me, I appreciate you. I'm grateful for you. Even the new people, the new beings and beautiful spirits and souls that's coming in, you know, this is where you meet me now in my chapter. And this is the, the, the that Phoenix aspect of how, you know, nothing can be, a Phoenix cannot be destroyed. It's the energy of how it always reproduces from its own uh, destruction or chaos or, you know, it always um, rises from its own, what was sent to destroy itself. And now part of how I see that is like taking full accountability of your own actions and your role in this life, even from younger to now, to see the awareness on like, okay, consciously, you know, when I was younger, when I was more pure in spirit, or when I had this deeper connection to source or to the creator, you know, in my innocence, um, I could have seen not necessarily no wrong, but I could really do no wrong in a way. <laughs> But, you know, due to the programming, due to a lot of things, when you're dealing with people who have had their also their shortcomings, their pain, their agony, their um, going through their own spiritual warfare, going through their own, you know, suppressing their emotions and so forth, whether it be caregivers and so forth, you know, just whatever they went through and then it was projected onto us. And I've been reflecting so much on my journey to where. Um, I've been having so been flooded with so many childhood memories lately. So many, um, so many experiences from past relationships, people, places, and then allowing that pain to surface, allowing this transformation, not just inwardly, but this personal transformation that I'm able to go through and feel with this scorpionic energy, like, and then literally put it here on a masterpiece. And the beauty of why you see this part is melting is because from my, from my understanding, from what I comprehend from it, at first I was like, okay, what am I going to do with this? So when you see him like looking up, it's the awareness of, um, uh, my, one of my favorite songs, Earth, Wind and Fire is like, keep your head to the sky. And one thing I always used to do when I was young, I always stargazed. I always looked at the stars. I was so intrigued and so amazed by like the Big Dipper or, you know, planets and the energies and so forth. And now I see the awareness around it now, how I'm like into those very things and, and the beauty of how, you know, the constellation or 
you know, seeing those things outwardly as an inwardly thing and just seeing the world as the oneness of how everything is connected. So again, the beauty of that is like, um, you know, with the 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 eye of the the if, I don't know if you can probably see it up there, but it's like it's three, but I like to perceive it as the spiritual eye, and so that is like what I um, my belief is like the first eye, like when you have dreams and visions or you have this connection, you know, the Creator God may show you a, a dream, and you know. I forgot that verse where it says eyes have eyes have not seen or ears have not heard, you know, the things that uh, and I'm quoting this the best way I know how um, the gifts or, you know, the things that God has promised on your life. And I do believe that we all get certain insight or certain, you know, things through um, our connection to the source, to the creator. And this is my gift. Like. You know, I have the ability since I knew I was younger to create. And it when I reflect on that, you know, I just knew I had. I just knew very young um, that I've spoken about this before, like there was such an attraction to what I created young. And I didn't really at a time really. You know, you're a kid really understood or, you know, overcame, to, I eventually came to an understanding or, you know, more of a self-awareness. Like you have a gift that I've given you, so use it. And the beauty of all of this through this being in this Phoenix energy is that um, since I could remember all the way to like kindergarten, um, all the way to like four or five to where again, I used to draw things and everyone that's in the class would draw. You know how you, <laughs> I remember specifically frogs. It was a frog, but it's like these little, I just remember like, you know, in kindergarten, they didn't give you like the realistic frogs, but they gave you like the frogs that typically were green. And so, you know how they give you the same thing in class <laughs> for everybody to draw. So I'm sitting here like, okay, that's what I'm going to do. So here you are drawing, but every ever since I was younger, and this is a thing about accepting your what you what may can be perceived as a curse, but it's really a gift. And the only reason I say it's perceived as a curse is because there isn't their support or encouragement within your within your uh, circle or whether it had in your family dynamic or whatever it is growing up to encourage you to realize that you have a gift. But again, depending on your support system, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and physically, then you won't feel as confident or as secure emotionally, mentally, and so forth in your set abilities that has been given to you by a higher soul, a higher source of power. And so this thing comes with a lot of uh, uh, evil eye or come with a lot of attention that, you know, to you, it may feel unwanted, but to the most high, it's like I've given you this to share. It's not yours. That's what makes it bigger than us. And so with me, over time, when I was younger, um, I almost brought Tupac in. But over time, me and my mama had, be and it's funny because we did younger, um, but when I was creating the frog, let me go back to the class setting. Um, I naturally was growing up in, um, you know, doing little art, doing art contests or whatever. But when I was very young at like five and, you know, as I progressed, there, there was always an attraction or attention to what I created. And I didn't really make, it didn't make sense to me when I was younger. I was like, man, it's just this, man. Like, you know how some of us, again, due to our support system, we try to downplay or dim our own light when in reality, it's not meant to be that way. We're not here to play small. We're not here to um, conform to the world. And that's what I, re, you know, show is like, I, my art is not here to conform to any ideology of what art is and supposed to be in this genre and so forth. No, I believe myself to be a trendsetter. That's what I was told. I am here to recreate 
and reinvent, redefine what art is from a place of healing, from a place of pain, from a place of love, from a place of um, the oneness. And that's why there is no said thing that is supposed to look the same. I'm creating from my own inner world and expressing it outwardly to everyone else. And the, and the peace in that, again, the Phoenix energy is know that whatever happens, you know, is a constant evolution of who it is. And one thing about an artist, we have a way of expressing things through our artistry without saying it. And so going back to, again, through the evolution from when I was younger, there is a lot of people <laughs> in my family that has no idea or have had no idea when I, like, even people that has been closest to me had no idea that I was um, an artist. And I don't mean just in this way, you know, typically people just knew me to play basketball and so forth, but they never knew the depths of um, this is something that was first, that was my first love. Like, this is, has been my gateway or, you know, my my muse throughout my whole entire life, even when there were times where I'm going to get into um, where um, I went through and I talked about how the phases of my life where I went when I was abused, uh, abandoned, neglected in the aspect of my childhood to see the evolution where I am now, even through my teenage years. And, you know, when I start getting into relationships you know, art has always been there, or I like to say just the creation of what's been given to me and be able to tell a story to through it. And again, the learning the process, how much it was bigger than just money in itself, or even learning my, my work through that aspect of, you know, um, my artistry. Let me make sure this is still recording. Okay. Yeah, we good. <laughs> so yeah. Um, Man, we, we, we really deep into this right now. Um, so, yeah. Um, where was I? Um, yeah, so going back to where, again, through elementary, uh, whatever. Uh, there was just things that I just realized, like, if I, I always found ways to create. I remember specifically, like, again, growing up in a troubled home or um, abusive home and so forth. Being bullied and abused so young, I still always found an outlet or escape through my art, even through or found a way to balance out through my art, through my creativity. Even when I would go to school, when I knew I didn't have to be yelled at, or when I, I knew I didn't have to be um, uh, yelled at or bullied or whatever, and I would find ways there. Um, I remember specifically... Um, just throughout elementary school, like I didn't really care for nothing else. Like in all honesty, I didn't care about grades. I didn't care about none of that stuff. As long as I could create, man, as long as I could do art, that's all that mattered to me. I'm not even going to bullshit y'all. Like that's all. And still in all honesty, what really matters to me overall. And that's not just so much of like not being irresponsible. It's just the awareness around I have accepted that I need to create a life around something that emotionally fulfills me. Now, if that comes through my creativity and I align with that, I'm honored to do that. You know, and that's why, again, when I published the books, I told myself this time, you know, oh my God, I got so many things to wear. So let me, I got to go piece by piece because I'm trying to do this so authentically, man, because y'all have no idea, like, this masterpiece says so lot about who I am and who the fuck I'm becoming, man. It's like, y'all have no idea, bro, what I went through in the past year and a half and so many other things from false accusations and still to be able to create through those said things that were basically not true at all and just go through the motions of the, the facing traumas, your own shortcomings, um, the, 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 the self-realization of like, you know, how much I caused and played a role in my own life and what has transpired, the father wounds, the mother wounds, the, 
Oh man, just just the 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 having to pick myself up and dust myself off um in those moments where I did not have that support that I felt I needed. And it's not this has nothing to do with playing victim. This has everything to do with victory. This is fucking victory. Oh man, I'm trying to tell you if y'all only knew. This is literally internal victory. This is like, when y'all see me at now, this is like unfuckable, untouchable, like confidence right now, inwardly, because to me, it ain't even matter how much money, where I'm at, and so forth in life. It's the it, it's the years of consistency. This is years of consistency when I was in hotels. When I was in relationships, when I got lost in trying to find myself in that partner, when I was in jealous relationships, when, you know, you, you try to show your artistry to someone and you don't really have that support because of whatever their blockages is. And then, you know, they start to show their true colors, you know, they're envious. And even though they don't tell you, you can pick up on the energy. You're talking about doing business with people that. You create art with, and then, you know, you create it for these books and all these other things. And, you know, learning the whole process of, like, you you need it, you know, not knowing, like, you could get royalties or revenue from that art and so forth. You know, I'm telling y'all, it's been so many things, like, the past 15 years, 16 years or whatever, that it plays a major role in even my about to be 35 and feeling amazing mentally, emotionally, like, and just even focusing more on my spiritual well-being and how I'm showing up for myself rather than just so many years of consistently pouring into people, doing this and wanting to show up for everybody else but myself. And, and this time around, I'm like, yo, you went through that for this. This melting the way that you see See, this phoenix is coming out. This melting away is like the ego self. But he still has his, his focus upwardly, like, you know, looking up. His head is up because his head is looking towards the stars, which reflects him, which is a reminder that your dark is your light, your yin and your yang. You are your yin and your yang. You are, you are the first and last love that you will ever have. Meaning that now that I've got to this place, it's like I love, I had to love myself my art was a reflection of loving myself through the through through the parts of me where I was so more focused on trying to find an outlet through basketball, alcohol, um, sex, so many things like trying to find, you know, who it is, you know, like a lost soul trying to find himself through this external reality, trying to find fulfillment through um you know, even at a time uh, trying to find fulfillment through um, what else? Uh, through those mother wounds, you know, and it's, it's, you know, and that that was a reflection of certain relationships, um, you know, from that unfulfilled or trying to fill that void. And in reality, like our gifts are naturally that that part of ourselves in the darkness. Like, you know, seeing the stars is that reminder that you are the light in the darkness as well as you are the darkness that uh, that allows that uh, illumination to happen. So it's like the polarity of that. So it's like the polarity of light. In order for you to see this phoenix rise from the ashes, there has to be darkness that surrounds that phoenix for you to see that flame. And see, I had to see that flame within myself and I realized no one could douse that flame. No one could put that flame out. I don't know who I need to say this to. No one can put your flame out. That's that in your essence, your soul, and who you are internally and forever. You are that aspect of life that um, the Most High, the Creator, has given you. This you are destined for greatness and for grandness. You are destined. You, you know your purpose. It ain't so much of finding your purpose. Your purpose finds you. And the purpose has always been there. Mm. I'm, 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 I'm rolling with it. I'm rolling with it. Follow me here. Your destiny has always been with you. With you. 
It's when we look externally and try to find fulfillment in other things is where we allow that very thing to decide our fate. Because mm. then that, that's how I feel like destiny and fate is one and the same, like the polarity of things. Because when we allow and give our power over to said things, we're allowing other people to decide our fate in life. We're giving our power to the very thing. And the thing about this is like, I'm not giving my power to this. That's coming that that the, the power isn't so much of in this and then what I obtain from it. That's not fulfilling to me. The power I realize is the fact that I am this. And then the evolution of that as I create more, whatever that is. And see, that's the creative spark. That's the divine spark we all have. That's the awareness that has been given to us. And that's the knowledge and the wisdom that has been bestowed because in that knowledge of knowing that I'm an artist, that's half of the battle. The wisdom comes when I apply it, when I don't feel like doing it. And that doesn't mean I'm not listening to myself. No, that means like I was sitting here and like so focused on like, how am I going to pay this? How am I going to do this? Um, is this person going to be here? Do I need to let go of this? How am I going to, you know, all these things that again, at the end of the day, does it matter when you realize that whatever is going to happen, I'm at peace with. Whatever is happening, I'm at peace with and will happen. Can I just realize that some of the, mo some of the most beautiful moments is, has come when I just allow myself to just be and connect to what I love to do? And this has been my emotional fulfillment for so many years and so when I when I realize I'm like, OK, you know, I didn't I had to look at it. like I'm be just blunt. Like, again, there has been moments where I didn't know how the fuck certain shit was going to get paid. Let's be honest, like I, everybody don't have to be there. I'm talking about, let's say you didn't know how uh, a bill, whether it's rent, um, a car payment or sometimes for even some people, they didn't even know how they were going to eat. And, and I'm telling you the evolution of where I've been to where I didn't even know where I was going to stay. But my muse through that shit was, you know what? Let me try to attempt to create something. And then that, that, that the universe responded to me. Okay, you say you want this or you said, okay, well, or you need this. Well, create something. You know, renew your mind, change your perspective on life. And that's what I did. And this is how I'm here where I am. And this is the beauty of what's unfolding. So going back to where, again, there are moments where you don't know how you're going to do something. And that's the fear I feel like people have is that the fear of the unknown. And that's something I had to learn to be secure with. It's like, I don't know. I don't know what's going to come from this. But am I now I'm at a better place mentally, emotionally to realize, well, you know what? I'm secure within myself that I'm ready to receive what comes from what has been given to me to the harm of none. Like I'm, I'm grateful. I was given this for a reason. So let me be appreciative and grateful that I am worthy to receive um, my value from this, knowing my worth now, which years ago I didn't. Because I was trying to find my worth in other people. I was trying to seek out that love. I was trying to make people believe like, hey, I am this artist that you should know about. Hey, I am this vital person to this, this evolution of humanity in this world right now. I am a vital piece. But in, in that, I was trying to tell other people. I was trying to prove to other people my 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 existence or to see me and in reality i had to see myself man i had to learn to see myself and accept that and accept those versions of me and so with that i became more aware why certain things didn't um happen or or stand the test of time or work for longevity it's just simply because i started to realize that I not only outgrow that, but I start to shed layers because my awareness around life. And I realized that these were people who were not willing to evolve. These were people who did not see their worth internally. These were people that didn't realize that they was in them, not on them. These were people who were not willing to go and, and 
go with you down that journey of the unknown territory, the uncharted territory. These were people who did not realize of the importance of let's clap on the way up. These were people who were not, you know, in the dark that not that it matters now, but I'm just going down a list of things that who 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 uh, were not supportive because specifically they will feel a sense of entitlement. So before they really supported you, they will never really be genuine with the support or they will help. But it will be from a place of breadcrumbing. So you're seeing a fucking reflection on the fact of I've had to build within myself, destroy the old ways of who I was, the old world. And that's why certain relationships, partnerships, friendships, environment, communities and so forth that did not reflect that said energy of what I was experiencing, what I was involved involving into and, and you know, um, it did, I start to accept and start to question like, you know what, this doesn't reflect who I'm becoming. So, you know, the suffering comes or, you know, through our own selfish attachment to the idea of our kids, our spouse, the environment, people, and so forth. So many things. And that's when I started to realize, like, to learn to the art of detaching, the art of letting go, the beauty, and just um, allowing myself to blossom, allowing myself to become what it is and be at peace with it. And not feel any sense of guilt and shame just because that didn't pan out. That didn't work out the way I wanted to. But that's the thing about the creator and the most high. We have been assigned to a purpose and mission where it is bigger than us. And like, as I create these things, it's like, as the ego dissolves away, the phoenix rises, you know, and it's like, it's in you, not on you type thing to where I don't have to prove to nothing or no one. Know thyself. Know who I, I've had to learn to know who I am throughout all of this instead of trying to think that I got to prove that um, this is what I go through as a darker man. No, I'm going to speak my truth about it, but deep, it's, deeper, it's, it's deeper than the skin. It goes beyond that. So I give, I talk about different levels of that. It ain't just, okay, you know, that's that's different versions of me or experiences that I've had to have, whether it's personally in this country, whether it's personally on, on, on another level. And then most importantly, my relationship with myself, that's more personal. That's more vital that I didn't know as I um, was a child. So I had to go through those traumas. I had to experience that mother, that father, that abusive relationship to being the abuser to realizing that, hey, no, you you wonder why these are the consequences is because you are not taking accountability, no matter how angry, no matter how much you drank at that time in that phase of your life. It's you now have to see your role through your evolution, through your growth to see like, wow, I had to learn to not let my past uh past to define me. I had to redefine myself through that. I had to recreate myself through that. And so no one would know the depths of that. No one knows the depths of my pain. I don't know the depths of your pain, of your experiences. That's what makes it so beautiful. The individualism, but at the same moment is how that connects us all on a deeper level, on a spiritual and soul level, where we're all going through and we're all clearing some type of karma, whether it's you come together and clear some type of karmic energy with this person. And that's the beauty of where, where I'm at now. It's like I had to go through this. And then I had to become aware that I don't need to feel ashamed for what I did. I don't need to feel guilt around what people feel like I should um, be. I've had to redefine myself through the fact of how people you know, at certain moments in my life where I realized they, did, they didn't cherish the peace within. You know, they, they didn't honor the peace. They didn't know how to protect their peace, so they projected. So they wanted me to feel the way they felt. They, you know, you have those type of people. But for a lot of you, look at where you are. And when I hear the silence in this, in this home, in this environment, and to be able to do this, no one will know the fucking like depths of what I had to do to even get here to create, to even exchange with y'all, to even create this. And it gets better 
because I choose to be better. So when people come and say, oh, you, you know, they're going to have their perception. I'm saying not, this doesn't matter. Oh, he think he's better. I am better. I choose to be better because I choose to better myself. Every day I am getting better. I am re, re, uh, redefining myself through my experience. I'm not allowing those experiences to define me. You don't have to. And that's the beauty of it because you're constantly evolving and you will evolve and the world is evolving. And that's what I've noticed even through the fact of when I did through the phases of my life where I realized that support was for my, that, 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 that non-supportive or that, that exposure of who that character was a person was for my protection. It wasn't just for me to be like, oh, crying out or begging and pleading like, why don't you support me? This is who I am. And then I started to realize, do you like the divine? Like, look at where you are. This is what I told you to do. This is what I called you to do. Doesn't this bring you more joy and fulfillment than trying to prove to others like, hey, see me. Look at me. Look at me. And you know what? A lot of that I realized came from my own abandonment wounds because when I was a child, just trying to fit in or try to be seen and Oh, I got to say this, this is for a lot of us. It was never meant for you to try to fit in your said family. You were not supposed to fit in. You have always been a so-called black sheep or outcasted or um, or or a light that shines bright. And, and in reality, people already knew this. Your mother and father, a lot of people already knew this around you that sat back and didn't clap on the way up. They knew this. But this is not where your journey ends and stops. This is the rebirth thing. This is what I love about Scorpio season. It's, it's so amazing because as I've been creating these things and, and then memories come up from, well, why this didn't work out or memories come up from a, uh, a repressed memory or, or, or a moment, you know, all these things flooding in. And I feel like that's a part of the energy that's going out and fading. So it's preparing me now for... Remind, it's a reminder. So when certain things represent themselves in certain things, whether it's people energetically, whether it's something that reminds you, um, some type of energy that wants to come in and cloud your judgment, you tell that energy like, uh-uh, no. This is where I'm at. And this is how what I had to realize. This is where I'm at presently. Doesn't matter who comes along trying to tell me, you know, this and that. No, this is where I'm at. And that's been a constant and consistent battle and struggle even with myself to where I had to feel worthy. I had to reflect on the patterns even with my mother. You know, this is so deeper to where like when who you around consistently growing up, sometimes we unconsciously don't even realize that we have a subconscious programming of these fears and these behavior patterns that we act out. And you're trying to, as a generational curse breaker, that is a part of redefining yourself because you, they, you, the, the world wants you to do things the traditional way, whether it be your holidays or whatever. Then your mom and everybody else wants you to do things the traditional way, even how you raise your kids, even how you do that. I don't believe in putting my hand, like, feel like they deserve that because I personally went through um, the physical abuse and stuff like that. So, and then that cycle of that holding that pain in and being the abuser and then being abused and all that, you know, those different patterns, being a generational curse breaker and redefining yourself is seeing the reflection of this is choosing to be better. This is choosing non-traditional ways of feeling like I have to do things the way people say I have to do. Absolutely the fuck not. Respectfully. And if people don't like it, this is where you implement healthy boundaries. That is the non-traditional way. The, tra the traditional way for a lot of people, their behavior pattern is to do things traumatically, to trauma bond. And see, that's been a process of even where I had to come here, cutting away, letting go, cutting ties, you know, with people who, you know, energetically don't have the mindset or, or reflect the core values that I have because integrity isn't what, you know, people don't know what integrity is. They, they don't know what it is to honor morals and principles. They don't know what it is to um, create a world or reality that is abundant in their own, you know, birthright or since their birth, or just create a life around peace, inner peace. 
um, a life around whatever that abundance and prosperity looks like for you. It don't look like the same for everybody. So a lot of us are here and I realize being a generational curse breaker is to break those non-traditional ways, whether it's working a nine to five, you know, diving into entrepreneurships where you have your highs and lows, the emotions you got to go through, you know, over the years, have I spoken about like how I've had to stay consistent, even when I wasn't in the best environment to create art. I had to walk places to go get stuff, but I still had to create. I still had to find a way. Then when I got to places, it's like the most high said, if you want this life, this is the beauty of evolution and redefining yourself. You want this life? You say you, 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 you mean so much? You want to live this life? Most people are not willing to go through the integrity to get to that shit. They want to jump over. They want to cut corners. And one thing that's beautiful about where I'm at, I didn't have to cut corners. If you're going to get through something, do it with integrity. So when they say, I'm going to use this term, when they say when the devil comes to collect or when I like to say this karmically, when, what you've sown, when that comes back around, why are you surprised at the harvest that you receive? Because that's the thing about accountability. That's the thing about self-awareness is that you know personally the seeds that you've sown. If you're not a child, like innocently in a way to where you know that you're naturally the codependent or I say dependent on mother or something like that. No, we know and that's the awareness of even what you see playing out in the country and so forth and everywhere else. People know the seeds that they've sowed and also a lot of their subconscious fears or their fears come about through the fact that the things that they are mo like afraid of, but it really shows itself. It really rears itself and, it, and, and then life will show you like, how are you going to respond? How are you going to respond to what's been given to you? Are you going to be able to channel your gifts, use your natural gifts, spiritual gifts that's been given to you? Yeah, you know, mama used, you know, she she didn't. And this is one thing I was reflecting on. I saw like breaking generational curses in, the, in, in being non-traditional is not just entrepreneurship for a lot of people. It's setting healthy boundaries. It's choosing to heal. It's choosing to love yourself. It's choosing. And, you know, that that's that's recreating and destroying the old world within you, the old belief system. The old narrative, even how you repre were represented in the family, in that karmic family. Then when you create your own, your approach then. So a lot of things can look different for everyone. It's all perspective. And so when you talk about doing things in a non-traditional way, a traditional way could be doing things more religiously. Okay, to each their own, but the world is evolving. A non-traditional way is standing on business, standing in your spirituality, reconnecting to your truth, your um, your spirituality, ancestrally, learning about your, you know, learning more about where you come from, your nationality, teaching your kids these things. You know, it's the beauty of it is that evolution has always been a miraculous thing because out with the old, in with the new. And this is what people don't want to accept. New age, well, they don't have to accept, but this, this is new age art. I was given this to share, to inspire all, to realize like you too have gifts. You too, whether it's through your writing, through your music, through whatever skill you have. And the integrity through that was most people are not willing to have. They're not willing to go through the integrity of not having shit. They're not willing to go through the integrity of people leaving their side in the darkest moment. They're not willing to go through the integrity of, um, and I'm not saying this is everyone's situation, but they're not willing to go through shedding those layers when the most high is trying to show you like, this is where the energy of this person is. This is their mindset. This is this. This is not where I'm taking you. This is not where I'm guiding you to. So they cannot go with you. And how that, I'm going to give y'all this analogy or this, you know, this, this visual. Imagine you come into this world, right? And you already have what karmically you're here to face and clear, you know, and that's, and karma is not just physical, it's spiritual. It plays out in the physical aspect. And this is what I have been reflecting on and realizing like the integrity I've had to have through the relations where I felt people love me the most or people want, you know, and so forth. Imagine this analogy of like this visual of you got a book bag, right? Or, you know, 
you, you, you're a little baby, but you know, I'm just giving you this visual. Like, okay, you're in your mother's womb and you come in, right? And you have, and as you grow, you realize like you, this book bag keep getting heavy and heavy. And in this book bag is just things karmically that you have to learn, lessons, things, and so forth. And this can consist of childhood traumas. This can consist, and it's not everyone. This can consist of so many things that you have to face internally here. Fears, you know, all these things in this bag. And gradually, as you get of age and so forth, you start to carry that bag. And it's starting to get bigger and heavier. Then even sometimes people come into your life and as we take on things from their life, the bag gets heavier and heavier until guess what? Oh, shit, I got to put this thing. You, you eventually, boom, boom, lay this bag down, right? And then you open it up. Then you come to the self-realization like, hold on, Paul. This ain't even my shit. Most of this stuff, you know, you digging at the top is other people's stuff. You digging in there. And what I mean by this, man, I'm just grateful for this insight. At the top is your mother, your, your mama's burdens, your father's burdens, um, um, uh, abandonment issues, uh, self abuse. You know your kids, and what I mean by that is like stuff that you put before yourself. Because as you start to remove this stuff and it's scattered all out, you know those of you that got luggage, you know what I'm talking about. Like <laughs> you try to pack all this stuff, you know it ain't gonna fit, and then you get to where you're going, you ain't even gonna need all of it. Hmm. So. But again, you, you're removing all this stuff. You didn't even know stuff was there. Stuff that's like almost antique dust. <sighs> you blowing it off like, damn, what the? F this ain't even mine. That's how life will have you sit down. The most I would get you all, and we all been there, we'll be get to a place where, look, you got to unpack this. This ain't even yours. So you're unpacking it. Then you get all the way to the bottom, and then you realize, like, at the bottom of those very things that you are afraid to face is your shit. It's your stuff. Stuff that you have ignored about you. And in that are your natural gifts, your, 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 your God-given gifts, as somebody say, your spiritual gifts or whatever. And you're here to use that. And see, in that process, all the stuff, when you get down there, this is like a lifetime thing in a way. It's like, that's what healing looks like to me. And this book bag, it's like, as you unpack and remove all this stuff, and these, you know, you start to realize, like, imagine this, like, all this stuff, this is your mother's burdens. And you pick it up, you're like, you know what? Why have I been carrying this? You're questioning, like, why have I been carrying this mother wound and this father wound in so long? This has affected my life. Because think about it, how are you going to show up for anybody else, but you're carrying your mother's wounds. You're carrying your father's burdens. You're carrying this, all this other stuff. How are you going to show up for yourself, let alone your partner? let alone your kids and so forth. And all this built up stuff from you and pain and agony and all this other shit. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh man, I can't do this. No. I see why. You know why? It's because it's not yours. Mm. It's not yours. And so in that, life will teach you, give your mama back her shit. Give, your, give these people back their stuff. And that's one thing I had to learn through my evolution. I had to realize, like, in reclaiming, in redefining myself, in reclaiming my power, uh, coming back home to myself, I had to give my mother her burdens back. I had to give her back her wounds. Mm. I had to give my father. I had to give other people back their stuff. And in that, guess what? I lost friends. I lost relatives, relationships, partnership, whatever it is. I had to call back my energy and be like, look, I cannot do this no more. I love you, but I love me more. I love me more. I got to get to know me this time around. Because if I don't, then guess what? Who, who, who am I to blame? Nobody but me. Because I have that awareness now. And so again, until you put that bag down and realize you start to move that stuff, and you got you and when you go back and give these people that stuff, that can look like having those uncomfortable conversations. That can look like trying to stand up for yourself when nobody else seems to get it. That can look like not so much a silent treatment, but you know what? I don't really have much to say. I just gotta show up for myself. This is a season where I gotta do this for me right now. I know you may not get it. I know you may be angry. I know you may be emotional. I know you may feel like, oh, I turned my back on you. But everyone does. They're going to come a point in time where people have to turn their back, literally, to you to move forward. They're going to come, 
Even for your kids, people have to walk away from you. So when they walk away, their back is to you. But what you don't see, like the other masterpiece that I had before in my other video, is those things that, you know, the wounds that they're facing internally. And that's why I did that other masterpiece with the, with the wounds and stuff. So I just had to give y'all that analogy. It's like, before we pass judgment and so forth, no one will never know the depth of that connection between you and the God within the source, you know, your connection to source. So allow these people to say and do whatever at the same moment. And you'll gradually realize that they start to fade. They'll start to dissipate that energy, that old energy, that new version of you is calling for a version of you that is aligned so much with your greatest, your, your, the greatest good or your higher purpose so there be no distractions. So that you are focused more on the bigger picture, even when people just see the fact of that their picture is just simply you and them. Mm. Somebody needed that. And that's their own selfish attachments to you. And it'll be revealed as you gradually expand. Because you didn't come here to play small. Then when, this time when you move forward through your evolution, through whatever it is you... It's okay to just have your shit in your bag. Mm. And that's the beauty of like the who boy, I'm telling you, I, 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 I do this. Like, like, again, the beauty of my evolution is reflect on the fact of like seeing what I went through, who I who I was around. Even when I would, you know, whether it was people pleasing or trying to fit in, I just couldn't. And that's one of the most challenging things I had to accept on my journey. I knew I was never trying to fit in. And then it can feel very lonely. It can feel very, um, very cold at times in a way. A lot of us I know have been there. It can feel very, you know, those that had to rise out of depression. You know, it can, it can feel very, um, you know, dark in a way to where it's not so much you, you know, you hate it. It's so much like you got to accept it. You got to endure it. But the beauty of that darkness that you find yourself. And so, and then there are others like you. You are needed in these moments. I had to be reminded of that where there was times where... In redefining myself, I went through so many emotions. I went through the depression state when I didn't even know what depression was. I went through um, things where I didn't even know how to face it. I didn't even know how to get out of it. I went through things where, you know, um, intrusive thoughts, uh, things that I know that didn't belong to me, like spiritual warfare type things. I, had, I went through things that I realized, like, what the fuck am I clearing? And then I start to, it start to make sense. A lot of us don't realize like on a deeper level, we, we're clearing things ancestrally too. So when I'm talking about redefining ourselves, we're clearing ancestral karma. We're clearing whether some may say it as past life trauma um, and karma. We're clearing things that, why I started to realize the importance of having that integrity. And from my experience, it's like that came with, People own spiritual warfare, their own internal battle tool, because they knew that you had something great upon your life. You had whether this anointing or this this purpose that has always been within you, but it was always judged or it was always something that either that person, because sometimes we have to come to that realization. It was not us in certain aspects or certain dynamics where you knew that you were just doing right by yourself, even when you were wrong. And integrity is you still doing right by other people, even when you were wronged, even when you were mistreated, even when you were mishandled, even when you were outcasted, even when you were judged like so by the world. But yet the consistency, you're still here. And that's the beauty of purpose is that you're still here. You still have a purpose. You still you are needed. You were sent here. You were guided here because you are needed. And, and just because other people didn't want you, they wanted you for their idea of you. They, they didn't love you because they didn't love themselves. They loved the idea of you. They were fantasized. You know, they were caught up in their lust. They were caught up in whatever it is 
and that that's what they allowed to consume them rather than seeing um you know seeing the beauty within themselves they didn't know to see the beauty within you so a lot of that was purposely for that so i had to learn to not have regret or shame around the fact that this is where i am and even though this is not here um certain things i had to go through the the phases of the emotion um to learn to be rebuilt or be reborn and be rebirthed <laughs> literally through my own emotions, through um, learning to be more spiritually healthy. And all that played a part to me showing up physically, you know, and that's the beauty of not cutting corners. That's the beauty of having integrity when people don't, when people know that they could have done this and they didn't, but you still stay the course. You still stayed on the path, even when you could have ventured off. <clears throat> Coming to that awareness, like you know what, this is just who they are, but this is who I am. So <clears throat> that's really what I have for y'all. Again, I may do a part two because, again, I still have to add more to this masterpiece, and I got some other stuff right now <clears throat> that I'm creating. Just remember that you are the phoenix as well, and that's what's happening in this. Inwardly, uh, like some may say, as above, so below, or, you know, as within, so without. And we're in like some miraculous, ever-changing uh, moments right now. It is truly, I will always encourage people to find the, the gratitude in the simplest things. And that's one thing I had to remember It's like, I don't like. The, the sacrifices or the, the 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 sacrifices that I had to let go of for myself or things I had to let go of um, was very tremendous. The mother wound was so huge for me from as from a man's perspective. The mother wound was so huge for me because when I reflect on that is that, again, we learn most and we receive most of our information, DNA structure and so forth from the matriarch or from the mother. And that is a part of the rising of divine feminine within us all, you know, you know, the feminine energy for me is that I realized that that emotional aspect, you know, that emotional body, that emotions um, part of who we are, a part of this human experience is that is something that has really kept a lot of us blocked. But that has been a huge, huge and amazing and miraculous life aspect of my life on how I show up and even how it's been <clears throat> almost like a portal into a whole other world to recreate and redefine myself from that anger, from that righteous, to, to have that anger and that, then to, to um, speak that righteous anger in a way like to honor that emotion, to honor whatever emotion shows up and realizing that they all come and they all go. And then even creating, using that now as I've been consistent with what I'm doing is instead of lashing out, I use that emotion now towards my own self-awareness and healing and towards my own uh, creating, like using that creative energy, um, using those childhood traumas and pains to redefine myself, using those wounds, those internal wounds that the world doesn't see and redefining myself through my artistry, through my writings, through everything else. And so that's the beauty of evolution. That's that's the phoenix. It's like the phoenix could look different in your world. The phoenix could be coming out from that sexual trauma, that abuse of relationship. Um, that, that phoenix could be a representation of you being reborn through that karmic cycle. You being reborn through... Um, whatever childhood traumas, even if you don't have never experienced things as such, you still being reborn through someone, meeting someone who has went through said things or or being reborn through this economical shift, this global shift, you know, being reborn through who it is you are internally and being reborn through those experiences where people have to, they just fade away and then you grieve that. And then you, you know, embrace you more now this time around. 
um, embrace that inner child. That's the beauty of what I had to do. It's like through a lot of my artistry where you see the babies and stuff, it's like that's a part of the essence of the inner child within me that I've been trying to crawl back through, <laughs> crawl back to almost like, oh my gosh, I got to get back to my essence. I got to get back to the part of me that, um, and it's almost like, imagine someone, you know, your mother or someone else pulling your leg when you're trying to grab inwardly for your inner child. I'm going to have to do a masterpiece on that because that's deep. But imagine like trying to get back to that part of yourself that doesn't judge you. That's your inner child. That part of yourself that, you know, that sees the value and the beauty in who you've always been. It's just you realize that through your abandonment issues, through what you experience, through other people's lenses, is that now you're aware that you, you have abandoned yourself. You have abandoned your gifts. You have abandoned these parts of yourself. And then you have to go back. And literally get the parts of the version of yourself at 11, 12, 3, 4. You know, a parts of yourself, memories that you can recall, those repressed memories and stuff. And that come up and you have to, again, this goes back to that bag you're unpacking. Those repressed memories and emotions in there that we wanted to ignore. And this is how you are reborn and recreated and redefined through what you experience. Because that experience wasn't just yours alone. I mean, it was yours alone in your individuality, but that experience was also with those other people. And that was their belief system on life. And this is the evolution that's shifting right now on all levels, whether internally, in the family dynamics, globally, economically. This is the beauty of the phoenix right now. This is the phoenix that's rising. And that phoenix is within you. As you reshape your world and the world as you knew, it will reshape, be reborn or be um, renewed or, you know, so forth outwardly. And this is the thing that most people fear. And that's one thing I had to become uh, surrendered to. It's like, I don't know. But that's the beauty of the unknown is I still got to be consistent. I still got to find ways to create. I still got to, you know, balance out life between showing up for myself, showing up for other people. And the beauty again is like allow that that phoenix to um be be consumed, be the phoenix. Allow you standing up for yourself this time around. Whenever that person comes back around or whenever things happen again, can you have the integrity? And then if that can can you see the importance of the reciprocity? All that you've been given, do you do, do, do you feel open that you deserve it? Do you feel worthy of that? So it's a lot of us that's going through things that looks completely different. That's why I love this Scorpio season because I'm telling you, man, transformation, those of you that aren't familiar, there's a backstory to a lot of things and you don't have to look it up. It's to each their own. But the transformation and the personal growth inwardly um, is so intense right now. Like, uh, one thing I had to do is go by the river, you know, and be reminded that your emotions, they flow, they like water. Scorpio is ruled by water, so it's like the emotion. And then, um, what is it, ruled by Pluto. So a lot of things that you didn't know about yourself or other people, these things that are coming up, again, that comes with unpacking things and giving back things and you finding out things that you didn't know and this, but also you being redefined through it and be reborn through it all, so... Y'all take care of yourself. Peace and blessings. Shalom.